Hi, welcome to Emmanuel Tabernacle Church. We are excited to have you here. Whether this is your first time or this is your umpteen time since you've been coming along with us on this beautiful journey of learning the word of God. We just want to remind you, this is a Bible study. And what that means is as you're learning, we would love for you to learn with us. We also know that not only is God is doing the revealing in us, but guess what? He's doing the revelation in you as well. That Holy Spirit that God talks about is that same Holy Spirit that's not just in me, but is also in you. And we're dying to hear what God is doing in your life or how he's revealing. Even if it's not just a revelation, but simply a question. A question usually leads to revelation anyway. So come with an open heart, come with an open mind, and join us as we begin to fellowship today on this Sunday Bible study session. I also want to remind you that there is a link for you to be able to join us live. And that is the Zoom link that I want you to click on right now. We're starting at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I just want you to click on that link and you'll be able to come on live with us. And any question that you have, you'll have the opportunity to ask it. Or if you have a revelation, we'll give you, we're hoping we have the opportunity as well so that you can give it. So we're getting ready to get started. We're getting ready to get into the fellowship, into the worship, and we're also getting ready to pray and hear the testimonials. But more importantly, we're getting ready to hear what God has said for us for today. I can't wait to see you. Talk to you soon. just did the welcoming if anybody have any testimony this is your time to share um and we can also pray to get started as well Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. Thank you for another Sunday evening where you have gathered us together, Lord God, to so fellowship in your name. Thank you, Lord God, for providing for us the means through which we're able to come together, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for all that you do for us, Lord God, for so many things we take for granted, Lord God, and the many things we see in the many unseen, Lord God. Yes. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. 
for forgiving us, Lord God. Yes, yes. But many things we do that is not of your grace, that is not of your will. But many times we fall short, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for not judging us, for teaching us how to love, and for loving us continually, immensely, and without merit, Lord God, but just because you love us, because you created us, and you are God. We thank you, Lord God. We ask, Lord God, that you will continue to share with us your love, share with us your grace, mm. share with us your mercy, so that we can do unto others as you do for us, Lord God. Amen. We ask, Lord God, that you will continue, Lord, watch over us, continue to teach us, Lord God, and continue to help us grow within you, Lord God. Find within us whatever it is that is a struggle, Lord God, and remove the blemishes, remove the darkness, remove the stumbling blocks. Yes, yes, yes. yes Thank yes. you once again. We ask as we continue, Lord God, that you will be in control, that you take the lead, and that it is you who are speaking, yes. and you who receive, Lord God. Yes. We honor you. We magnify your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Welcome, Dina. Dina, welcome. We miss you. <laughs> I don't know. I think oh, I... <laughs> I'm sorry. Dina, not hear me. But uh, welcome. We miss you a lot. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Pastor. Yes. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. That's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Um, you want to start past that? You may. I may. I want to say congratulations for Black Jana. Oh, go to high school and this is this is wonderful i mean i was shocked when i heard that the gladiana is in high school mm -hmm. it, it was it it i i was still coming with joy it, it was wonderful and i don't want to start without congratulating the game gladiana for a start high school we wish you a very successful year uh, a very um, joyful year and also integrate to high education. <laughs> Thank God. You want me to start now? Yes, sir. Unless anybody have a testimony. If not, then we could just get started. I don't plan to stay too long today. Well, you know, to be told, I am grateful. Like I said, Casper said, my daughter is starting high school, and then my son is starting eighth grade. Um, and for most people who, for whoever knew, we've been homeschooling them, and so this has just been um a really a blessing. I really believe it's from God Himself, uh, to direct us in everything that we're doing. Um. And I feel like he's doing way more than we know. Um, what we see is just, just the bare minimum of the greatness to come out of this because it is a seed. So for many of you guys who have children in school right now and know that a seed is being planted and the seed is not always school. The seed is what you put in that child. That's right. Yeah. That, 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 that starts to propagate. And then from there you have school. When you understand mm -hmm. that you start from the home, you understand that you're still the one to direct your child to where you want them to be. Or more importantly, God is the one to direct the child in who he wants them to be. And I always say that, I said, I feel like I'm just, you know, it was just, he gave me a gift to take care of. 
You know, I'm not the creator. I am the stewarder of, we're the steward, we're stewarding our children. We're directing them according, and we have to go to the creator to get the instructions to do what, what we're supposed to do with them. So really and truly is what God wants. And so we're just really grateful and very proud of them, I might add, because um, we don't really talk about it because number one, not many people support what we're doing. And that's okay because it's not people who we need the support from. It's the instructions that we need from God. And he's the one to direct us to where they're supposed to be. And I feel like he filled all the questions that we didn't know how to answer. Every time people used to ask me, what's going to happen next year? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just as clueless as you are. Yeah. But I know that if God is in the front, it's going to be good. It's going to be all right. It's going to be fine. And just watching them grow and watching them learn and become who they are, I can already see you know, what God was trying to hide um, because I couldn't see what I was doing, what we were doing right, even what we were doing wrong. You know, I probably was more likely to tell you the wrong than the right, but I was just trusting the process. We're just trusting it, moving forward. And now today to say that, you know, they're in high school, I'm very, very proud of them because um, they stuck through, they, they stay focused. Um, my son will be following in the following year. So for all of you guys who have children out there, we are praying for you guys as well, knowing that the journey, no matter what direction you take, just know that the first thing you have to do is put God first. Then the rest just kind of figure itself out. And I'm sure Pastor is, you know, have a, like he's the main person who can tell you for he had children now who are grown adults with their own children who are in college you know what I mean so we're just hoping and praying that God can lead us um in the same way um that he led our our pastor as well but we're faithful and we know that you know just as God started his good work he is going to finish yes. yes so that is how it is. Yes. Um, um, uh, one thing I will add in this is that for all of us, and especially all the parents which is out, which are which are outside, uh, which all over, uh, one of the main things that we should um do for our children is to support them, to be behind them. <laughs> to always be there and always be there for them. And also when they go to school, go to some of those meetings, not some, all the meetings that you could go to um, and the teachers over there in the, in the school is supporting because it's good for, for your face, to, for the child to see your face in the school uh, where they are. So, they, they feel good when they see mama and daddy is in, is in the meeting, is in the teacher's meeting, is in the, in that, it is very good because that's what I did. <laughs> that's what I did. <laughs> and every place they go, I am there in, in the, from the primary school as well, go to the high school. Uh, and from college, I think college, I, <laughs> I don't go to the college, but I support them in the college. I support them. I, I be there to sign paper for them, to do whatever. Whatever I could do, I do. So I would encourage every parent, every parent uh, to be there because the children, really, they are our future. Uh, they are the one who will pick up after us. When we go, we have leaders. <laughs> You may have leaders in your house. So um, I was extremely hysterical when, in fact, I blame, I blame my brother who not even tell me, and my sister who not even tell me, Gladia is in high school. And, <laughs> and this is great. And I congratulate them too. I congratulate each one of them. I mean, Ricardo, as well as his wife, Gladia that they are on the top of the situation. 
uh, I congratulate them and, and, and I say, well done. That's all I can say. As well as the recuse in the eighth grade also, please. I, I don't forget about recuse. Recuse in the eighth grade. That's a very beautiful thing. So I am very, very glad to see things like this happen uh, among us. Um, it's very good. It's very good. It's not something that I have to talk about in the scripture, but this is part of the scripture too, you know. You understand? That's part of the message. That's part, that's what we study in this in the scripture too. It's part of it too. Because remember, in the in, in the scripture, it is said, teach the child the way he should grow. And then you will not depart from it. But if you don't teach the child, how the child going to be getting going to make a lot of mistakes before he catch up. Going to make a lot of mistakes, mistake unnecessary. He going to, she going, she or he going to make if we don't stay with them. So, my dear parents, God bless you guys, and there is God strength you to give you the strength and the courage. I know sometimes it is difficult, especially, especially you have to work. You have to earn the daily bread and you cannot stay with the child all time. So I understand the situation. The situation is hard. It's hard for especially again for the single parent. The single parent is one harder. The single parent is harder. It's hard for the single parent. For a couple, it's not how the mother could pick up and then go on and the father could pick it up and then, then vice versa, they could help each other. But when you are single parents, you don't have nobody. You don't have no one to call. Sorry to stay like that, but I, 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 I feel for you. God is with you and God will strengthen you. And God will give you the courage to move forward and also financially, he will provide for you. God bless you, guy. Amen. Bless you, guy. Hmm. It's hard. Um. So we take this time because it, it is necessary to take those time for these kind of the program because they are very good for us. That's the way it is. This is why Christ came anyway in the first place. <laughs> that he may teach us the right way. Anyway, let's go back to some of the things that we have to check. Remember, um, I asked a lot of questions, but my purpose of asking those questions is to stimulate you, to stimulate your spirit, is to bring your spirit to a place of concentration, a place of thinking. I know it's hard, but I'm sorry. I have to do it. Because we all have to be in the same page. And that's why I ask so much question. Some of those questions, they are very hard. Some of those questions, they are very easy. Some of those questions, I made it up. Because I want to stimulate you. I want to stimulate every one of us. So all of us could be in the same page. And thing that you do not understand, ask me or ask the sister, or ask the brother which is behind you. That's, but in any case, ask questions so all of us could learn together. Remember that we were, we were talking before about God intervening. And this is the subject we're dealing with. And it's a long subject. It's not a small subject. It's a very long subject. Uh, God intervened in man dilemma. It is a dilemma which is hard. And we don't have a solution as human. But God has a solution. And therefore then he has to intervene. Because he loves us. That's why he's intervening. Because he loves us. He don't want to lose us. And since he don't want to lose us, he intervened. Now, the last point we were stopped. The last point we were stopped 
is two. The final plex sentence of Lucifer, son of the morning. Now, some of these things we are talking about, they are metaphor. And we take the metaphoric of it and try to bring it to, the, to our level. And the scripture is our guide. As you know, the scripture is a notebook where we could go and find reference. And we find those references and then we match it up. And then another notebook we have is our own life. Our own life. What is happened around us? What we do? How we could compare them and match them to see what really going on? What really going on? And all life become a notebook. All action become a notebook to see where we are going and what is happening to us. And may I say that before I go to the to the to the to the um to the point, are we all satisfied with our life? And what I mean, satisfied with our life, with what is going on around us. That's what I mean. Are we all satisfied with what is going on around us? Um, such as living in a place that misery and both and almost all around is come to us, such as the misery we could talk about, first of all, to eat, to have a daily bread, to have a work. That's the first thing, to have a shelter, to have a place where diseases is not rampant the way it is. Sickness is not moving so fast and we are not dying, that's part. But again, take another way. Living in the place that you walk in, you have to watch your back. Somebody either stealing or try to kill you. Flip it over more deeper. When you talk, when I talk, People are not telling the truth. We are not honest towards each other. We are always looking for something towards each other. And what we are looking is not something to benefit it, all of us, but is it something to benefit it, me? We are not honest. All these things, we put them together to see where we are going where we are going. And when I talk, I talk generally. I talk all the world is in that dilemma. So we just take this. So now we go now to the point where we could say um, Lucifer has the final um, sentence. As we see in Genesis um, chapter um, in Genesis chapter 3, that's the final sentence. Now, what do I mean by final sentence? What do I mean by that? In Genesis chapter 3, now we are studying the fall of man and who caused him to, who caused them to fall or who caused us to fall. And I slept for a little while. The, the consequence that we as human get, I flip it over. I don't go there yet. 
I flip it over. But I am going now to the consequence of Lucifer. Because you could see if you read in Genesis, in Genesis chapter 3, and verse, I believe verse 22, if somebody read it for me, please. Genesis chapter 2, chapter, uh, chapter 3. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us. No, before that. Not yet, not yet. That I'm coming, that, that's the one I'm flipping over. So I give you the one verse right now. The place that he is he, he, when 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 Eve said that's Lucifer, that's the serpent give, give me that the fruit. So that would be you want know, verse 14? Yes. After, after that verse. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, that one? Yes. Because thou has done this. So this is verse 14 in chapter 3. Chapter and the Lord 2. God said unto the serpent, because thou has done this, thou art cursed above all cattle. <clears throat> okay. Stay there. Let us, let, us, let us do some examination. Um. Uh, did God, when God asked Adam who gave him that the food, that's the first question God asked Adam. And then after that, he asked Eve, why you do this thing? Now, he gave Eve and Adam a direct information and not only that, he talked to them. He don't just cut them up. He don't just say, okay, because you do that, this is what you do, this is what you do. This is what's going to happen to you. But I, a, a Lucifer, he didn't give Lucifer no chance. As soon they pass through Lucifer, he automatically put his sentence. If you if you notice that you don't see there is no intimacy, there is no um in between. There is no questioning. There is no questioning. It's just cut it off like that. Now my question is that why God did that? Why didn't question the devil? So the thing is, God's not asking questions to find answers because God already knows what happened. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, this guy He's not. So the to you shouldn't assume God is asking Adam and Eve because he wants to know. He's asking Adam and Eve so they know for themselves what's happening to themselves. So it's like if you saw your kid doing something and you saw it and you ask him, did you do that? Even though you already know he did it. Right? Are you asking them because you want to know or you want to know what they think or what they want to? So you want to know how they respond. In other words, do they have remorse? Right? So that part is why God comes to them. Whereas Lucifer doesn't have remorse and God already knows Lucifer. And God knows what's in Lucifer's mind. And God already has no expectations for Lucifer to even try to... to to defend himself, it's the two different animals. One is a creature that he is already admonished, his child also, but a bad one who he has already given up on. Let's just say it, put it plainly. You know what I mean? He has made his peace, he has made his peace with, with, with destruction. He has his he has made his faith. Christ, God is asking Adam and Eve to. It's actually putting them on trial. Yes. So, but again, this is written in a way to, you know, but not to get deep into it, but the whole difference is God is giving them an opportunity to defend themselves. Whereas the Lucifer doesn't have, doesn't need a defense because his fate is sealed. I'm, I'm my brother, I, I, I let you talk because <laughs> you, 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 that's why I want us to, 
to participate. Because what is in your mind, what is in my spirit is in your spirit, except I just have to shift now, shift. Um, God give Adam and Eve a chance, but he did not give uh, um, uh, Lucifer any chance at all. In fact, he gave him a final notices. Um, we are not going to talk about the fruit. Can I be a devil's advocate? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. What did the snake, what did every other snake in the world do? It was just leave the place. <laughs> so, so it's, the, the joke is, so every snake before Lucifer had legs, and because of Lucifer, now snakes don't have legs. It's a, it's, it's just a joke. <laughs> right, okay. to, me, to me, this is a metaphor, which right. also, which also, I put England in it. I put England in it, and I put other European in it, and also I put the, the Egyptian in it, the first civilization in it. You remember the first civilization used um, um, alligator as a metaphor. Well, Egyptian, bro. Yeah, the Egyptian used alligator as a metaphor. England used that dragon. The red dragon, they call it, as a metaphor also. And there are a lot of pictures going on. So I call it those metaphor, and the same thing with the, with the word the, 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 um, dragon, uh, with the word Satan, uh, all these things are metaphor. What I see to myself, is that things that are in the scripture, when you go deep, you could relate it to our action. You could relate what is going on to what we're doing. We could, you could relate it. So to me now, I am not focusing too much on the metaphor or how would I say they call it not only metaphor, but today we call it a um um there's a word we use when we take a uh how we call it again when we use a word we say this is a um you flip it over, you give him you you give the person something that he could see and then flip it over to something that is tangible, something that you can see. A analogy. That's the word I'm looking for. A, a, for analogy, you could use it like that. But nevertheless, God gave a Lucifer a chance before. And what was the chance God gave Lucifer? God gave Lucifer. When when you go to to the book of Revelation. Let's go to the book of Revelation and see where Lucifer was cast out from the from the from from heaven, from the presence of God. When Lucifer was cast out, there is a word there which is a key word. And in the book of Revelation, I think in the book of Revelation. Uh, Revelation, Revelation chapter um, well, no, I think 19. Chapter 19. I think when the war. Nineteen. When Lucifer been cast out. When he's fighting with Michael? Yeah, when he fights with Michael. Uh, verse is 12, Revelation 12, verse 7. 
and a war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent, that old called the devil and Satan, who deceived the whole world. He was cast out on the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of this Christ has come for the accuser of our brethren. Okay, you stay here. We'll keep going for the accuser of our brethren. Mm -hmm. uh, pass out, which accuse them before God mm -hmm. day and night. Accuse them before God the night. This is the accuser. Now look and verse where is said when they say that deceive, verse 9. Deceive the whole world. A separate call the devil who deceived the whole world. Okay, now what if say to God? Deceive. deceive Eve. Eve. <clears throat> the word deceive appear again. Begot. Begot. Which is deceive. Begot. That is the same word right there coming up again. Accuse and deceive. Accuse and deceive. Um, now, when we see that devil been cast out before, why cast out before? Because he he, he indulged himself in that same fruit we're talking about, good and evil, and he is corrupt. Being corrupt, he knows good and he knows bad. He knows what is good, he knows what is bad. The problem of devil, he cannot control the knowledge that he has. He indulged in the evil more than he indulged in good. Being indulging by evil, now he start to deceive the angel and accuse the angel before God, day and night. What do we mean by accuse? What do we mean by accuse? How could you give me more about accusing? about accusing. Now, when I say accusing, we have to flip over. We have to, to, to get the full understanding of it, you have to flip over to our court, to the criminal court, in order to get the full understanding of what's going on here. We have to flip over to criminal court. When we say criminal court, what do we mean by court? Our court today, today as we talking today, the judge, the, the criminal, the, the, the judge, what, what do we do? What do the persecutor do? What is the work of the persecutor? The prosecutor, you said, right? the, Yeah, the pr prosecutor, what, what, is he, what is his work? What is his, what he does? So, it's to hold you accused. To accuse you of crime. Okay, to accuse you. But according to our court, before a persecutor accuses you, what does that persecutor have to do? Prove. I, prove. Mean, I agree, I agree, I agree. They will prove, but give me, give me more detail. What does that persecutor have to do? Don't give me one word only. Present the accusation. Yes, I know, but before you present the accusation, what work he, he or she does? Question. Before asking, yes, 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 yes. Why asking question? To hear both sides. To... Well, no, remember, the prosecutor is not a judge. 
The persecutor is not a judge. To look for like a loophole? Uh, yes and no. Yes and no. Remember, we're talking about accusing. What do we mean by accusing? I think a good definition is um, claim that someone has done something wrong. All right. Claim. How do you know he claimed something? He, he did something wrong? The proof. How, how do you get the proof? I'm sorry yeah. to ask those questions because this, you, this is just to size thing you to, to pick you up. How do you get that proof? Investigation research. Investigation. Investigation. Research. In investigation. Investigation. We well, have to go to the origin of who the devil is, going back to the book of Job. Mm -hmm. And that's an older Jewish concept of Jesus, the devil being in this court as someone who brings fault unto man. But, but his, his his case is to God. So it's not his case is not to man. His case no, 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 no. To 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 me now, I take this, I take that that the analogy is to flip over. That's why I take that analogy so you could understand what devil is doing because that's the same thing we're doing too. Remember. I'm saying that's where the term accuser comes from. Is that's that right. That's right. You see, you, you have to see our concept. See our concept and see there is not much difference between our concept and the concept of God. God. The concept is, is, is almost similarity. Why? Why there is a similarity in, God, in our concept with God, God? Well, if we're looking at it the opposite way, it's, that is his way that we are taking from what he already <laughs> had established. That's why we create, he created us and us he made. That's why we create us in, our, in his image. Remember, we have God quality in us. We have God footprint in us. Understand that. We are not far from God preset. He is not giving us something in the sky or something over there. He gives us something that we are custom with. Because, because why we are custom in it? because he has given us intelligence, understanding, knowledge, wisdom, discretion to figure out these things. So one thing about it is that the difference between us and God is that we have a, a justice court, a court that is based and bias. And why I'm not going to go there. If I go there, we're going to flip over. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, we're going to flip it over. But never keep going. Now, Lucifer looking to us to find things that we do, which is contrary to God's way of living. But the problem is. Before I go to that again, I, I'm going to, but I can't go there again. Um, let us attack you see if I finish. Let us finish this. If I, then I could go back to where well, that's why I flip over those two, those two things between Adam and Eve. I flip it over, I leave it. We're going back to it again, but I flip it over so I could attack and finish with Lucifer. Lucifer now, God. Give Lucifer a chance. God give Lucifer a chance. What chance does God give Lucifer? From the time that he cast, he put him out. When he fight with Michael, he put him out from heaven, from heaven 
from the from the luxurious thing, please, the, the, the beautiful thing he been, from the, the joyful that he was doing, the privileges that he got, he can't been cast out. Because he knew that is Lucifer. He knew good and evil. He knew it. He understand it. But what was the problem of for him go doing good and evil? What was the problem Lucifer faced when he indulged himself in good and evil, which was not forbidden for him to take? Which was forbidden, as you say, for him to take? What happened to him? What happened to Lucifer? Now, I am going to heaven now. I am I'm not on the earth. Are we, are we certain that being that he's an angel, when he already have access to good and evil, I mean, I think it's a separate. Yeah, that, I know. I think <laughs> I, 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 it's a separate thing, but so, I have to yeah, it. Because remember that God puts angels in charge of us to protect us, right? I, I'm but, not going to go. Don't go there yet. We well, to, meaning we to say that we, we every time we see angels, angels have knowledge that we do not have. Yes. It's, it's not impossible to understand the reason we were set aside is that we were not supposed to have access to information yeah for, I, i'm coming i'm for, coming. for our own good so I'm coming. again metaphors right i'm coming i'm coming i'm coming it's, I'm a, coming. Particular, it's a particular knowledge that is given that's not that's forbidden and i think that is the key word there is if you really start dig deep you're you find yourself the loopholes start to un unravel and then it starts to go, you, go ahead. O open the loophole there. Yeah, you start to have to fit the loophole and then it starts to become more than just words that it's more than what you're seeing. There's more to it. Because if you understand who are the angels and why why we are different from the angels, it comes to some kind of uh uh some kind of a separation between man and angels. Right, so yeah, there's, there's yeah. the whole point. The whole point of the whole point of Adam and Eve at the end of the day really is Christ. So yes, yes, but we can't come to Christ now. No, I'm just I'm just saying that if you start to dig in, you we have to. to break. It'll break the. It'll start to break apart the the secrets. It's just we, going straight to the point. We have to. We have to. Why we have to do that? Mm -hmm. Because. God give what is the purpose? What is the purpose for for Michael to fight with Lucifer to put him out from for, and, and in fact he even agreed by God to put him out from, from heaven? What is the purpose? What is the reason? What is the reason cause Lucifer to be cast out? Disobedience. Disobedience is true. But disobedience of what? Yes, God. See, the, you're, the thing is, the war is the is the is the thing. It's not what causes the war, right? We don't that's have, it, that's uh, this is what we dig in now. That's yeah, what we saying, No, I'm saying that's the whole point. Jesus Christ says it very simply. He says she's been a deceiver from the beginning. So we understand that this is not from, this is, doesn't start here. He's calling out that this has been something that Lucifer is from the beginning. I, I so won't we have say to go that. Beginning meaning that. before us, before our creation. I, 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 yes, yes. You see, what is beginning? <laughs> Like we, we have a starting point. That's right. We have an ending point too. That's right. But God doesn't. It's no. It's infinite. So That's right. When he's when you speak of beginning, it's the beginning of that creation or the beginning of when you became an existence. That's right. So, you know, if he's saying the beginning, he could have been a deceiver to us. I don't think the the angels are deceived. I think they're 
they made a choice of what to stand for. It may not be necessarily deceived, but he 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 held an uprise against God, meaning he wanted to take his place. He are it different. So he understood the power, but he also understood that he wanted to be the one on that throne. And you are pushing me. You are pushing me. You are pushing me for a point that I already have. You are pushing me. Both of you are pushing. Anybody else want to inject? Because I, I don't want you guys only. The, the, the stimulation is going on. You are pushing me to pack up another point, which will prove to you what is happening. One thing I want you to do, keep that in mind, those, th those, those thinking that you all have. Keep that in mind because this is very good. When Christ said the beginning, Christ is not talking about the beginning of, of a of Lucifer existence. No, he's well, talking about the beginning. It's a reference to us. It's not. It's no, not, no, not yet, not yet. No, no, what I mean to say, the word beginning, because you're talking about time that we don't understand. No. If you say there's a beginning, okay, say for instance, if a million years ago, there was a million years before that, Yes, yes. Still a beginning for God for Christ when he's speaking. He's speaking about Lucifer or whatever his name was when he was an angel, created a created a schism in heaven. That happened before Adam and Eve. No, forget don't, don't mention that's why I skipped those two points. I skipped Adam and Eve. I'm coming back to them. Right. I mean, don't, don't 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 take don't put your mind on Adam and Eve anymore. I'm not. I can't recall where I read that. It was either the Jubilees or some other place where they talk about try to give like a idea of heaven long before man. Of course, of course. Uh, which is which is even the very age we are here. I believe there were other people who were there before us. Yeah. But nevertheless, don't. Don't focus on that point yet. Keep that point in the, in the back. Let us focus on Lucifer. And let us focus where we, we are talking, we are talking trillion of trillion of trillion of trillion of trillion of trillion of trillion a year. The point we are driving at, there was no human at all. Human was not even a start. There was no human at all. So we, we flip ourselves with now. According to the passage we read, according to the passage we read in the book of Revelation, but then according to the passage we read now in the book of Genesis, when you put those passages together, you will see Lucifer was before them. But not only that, According to the passage, you will see Lucifer was not evil. Lucifer was not evil. So when we're talking about the beginning, he was not evil. Well, relative, relative to him versus us. There's a difference. No, no, don't put us. Forget about us. No, I'm saying what do you mean by when you say. No, don't, don't, don't for, flip your mind. Flip your spirit. Don't think about us at all right now. We are not exist. No, what I mean to say is how we perceive it versus how they perceive it. Meaning that Lucifer is a brethren of, of, the, of, of the angels. They may have disagreements. Their disagreements to us is war. To them is disagreement. It's a different perspective. I don't think so. I don't think so, because this is why I say again, wait for, uh, for the other two, for the two point I left behind. When I did, when the, the point I left with Adam and Eve. I point that out like in the comparison to the book of Job, 
would he be considered evil in that perspective because he's having a disagreement with God? Yeah, uh, uh, that again, uh, wait for me, my dear brother, wait for me, you're too hot for me, you are, <laughs> I want you to concentrate right now on the disagreement that Michael have with Lucifer, on what caused the war between Lucifer and the angel because Michael is an angel. Michael is an angel, but at the same token, I see bigger than, I see greater than that. I see greater than that. Michael, Jesus Christ, also part of that uh, equation. I'm talking way back, before, before the existence. Jesus Christ play a role there. He play a role there. Jesus Christ play a role there, in in the in the fall of of a, of a, of Lucifer. Now I'm not talking the existence of us. I'm talking Lucifer. Christ play a role in the fall of Lucifer for Lucifer to cast out. Are you separating Christ from God in this perspective? No, 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 no. But I'm, I'm, I'm no, I'm, yeah, I'm saying, okay. <laughs> yeah, go, go ahead, go ahead. You, you, so you. If you're saying that millions of years ago, Jesus Christ now having not been a man, so he's just God. So which place are you putting him? God, who is the judge of everything? Who is the judge? God. And remember, no, if I do, if I say that, I'm coming back on earth, but I don't want to come on earth now. I leave the earth now. If I use that verse, I have to come to me now. Uh, um, it's not going to be, I'm going to lose you. I'm going to lose you. But nevertheless, uh, Christ, is the judge. God is the judge. Michael could not, Michael could not involve in that war without the creator approval. Michael could not cast out devil without the creator approval. Because remember, the creator is overall and is the only judge to solve the problem. So the angel have problem among themselves. And from that time, Lucifer, who knows everything, keep on accusing the brethren and Michael rise against him. Now from Michael rise against him, he been cast out. When he cast out, because he accusing the brethren for doing things that the brethren didn't do. Um, let me bring you back to it again. When you appear before a court, when the persecutor present a case before the court, what is the what is the the the, the judge um, rule? What the judge do? Analyze. Analyze for what purpose? To find the truth. Yes, to find the truth. Again, I question more. Well, uh, the same, uh, you, I, I agree with you now. I agree to find the truth. For what reason to find the truth? While the judge will be the one to present the verdict. That's right. Uh, the judge is also, think of it as another lawyer, mm -hmm. where they're trying to... Uh, how do I say this? With all the questioning and all the stories that you're going to find in court, 
is to help the jury come with that verdict. Mm -hmm. Do you do you see the situation here? And this is now who is the judge at that time? It must be the creator. It must be the creator who passed the judge. Why? Ask me question, please. Ask me question. Hey, ask me question. Ask me question. Ask me question, please. Anybody? Let me put word in your mouth. Well, the question I had was, why does God need a jury? Or you see, you have to flip it over now. What my sister giving you? He giving you a system which is compatible in some way with the other system. Remember, these things are, are a bit complicated. I'm trying to, to put it, which is a little bit complicated. Who is the, the supreme judge in everything? Does he need a jury? That's what I'm asking. Well, this is why I must, but now don't, what my sister is saying is why, why they need a jury here on earth? Because we're not God. <laughs> on other words, the jury has a, 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 a range. Well, the, the system is designed for failsafe because even the judge himself can be corrupted. Of course, my brother, please give me a break. <laughs> But I have nothing, I have nothing to put there in order for us to understand what we are talking. Understand me. I am thinking some, uh, what Jesus said to Nicodemus. What did Jesus say to Nicodemus when you say you must be born again? If you go to John chapter 3, you will see what he said to Nicodemus. In John chapter 3, he goes on to say after Nicodemus, after he finished talking to Nicodemus. In John chapter 3. After he said he must be born again, yeah. Keep, after keep on reading from after he said if we go uh, after keep on reading the whole passage so you want to see the key word here. Yeah. Yeah. Very very short. Very very. I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but spirit. Spirit, you should not be surprised by my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows, whether it pleases, you hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. To, 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 to make you then go read verse 11 and 12. Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen, but still, you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? Do you see? I, I finished. I put my point now. My point already made. Do you understand my point? I'm trying my best to take the corruption of this court to present to a holy court. Right. So there must be some kind, you have to go with me to understand the, 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 um, the gravity of the situation. You have to bear with me to understand the gravity of the situation. And I think you are very well 
come with that plan. Because if you didn't come with that plan, I would not make any, I would just keep going. And that's why we say we have to talk. That's a very good plan observation. I would say not a plan, but it's observation. That's a very good observation. Well, that's just to also show you the kind of God that he is. He doesn't leave room for you to claim him as a deceiver. No. He allows us to see him in the light that he is. He's like, I'm allowing you to question me. I'm allowing you to investigate me because I have nothing to hide. My intention. Oh, 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 do you see what you, this is same thing Jesus Christ said, which you have said. Except you put it in a very uh, open way. But this is why Christ said, he has nothing on me. Amen. I come and he has nothing on me. What do you mean by he has nothing on him? The prince of this world has nothing on me. Understand this situation. This is why I said again, Christ involved in that situation in heaven, in some way, not as man, but as the creator. Not as man, but as the creator. And this is why he, could give the final sentence to, to Lucifer in the book of Genesis. Because when, when Lucifer cast out, Lucifer was not sentenced yet. He leave Lucifer to see if Lucifer would change. Mm -hmm. If Lucifer would do his life better. But instead, he attacked another creation that God made. And he used the same thing again, deceived them again. He used the same plan, he deceived them again. He been deceiving the angel, he been accusing the angel before the creator. They give it, the creator gave him a chance to change, but he continued. Therefore, he reached to the point now, the creator passed the sentence. I'm going to stop here. Remember what I said. The creator passed the sentence. I'm coming back to you again long ago, but help me to focus because my head is getting hot. Um, since the creator passed the sentence, I have some few verses to read there, but um, I can't read them because if I do, I'm going to turn myself to Jesus now, but I don't want to attack to go to Jesus. I want to still stay in Genesis. I want to stay in Genesis. Now, uh, Naomi, where are you? I don't hear her at all. Now me, now me, now me probably sleepy. I'm here. Oh, I thought you were sleepy. No, I'm not sleepy. I'm listening. Oh, I want to hear you. Yes. The thing is this, that Lucifer um, come to the point that he attacked the, 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 um, the uh, um, Adam, uh, which is coming in. Uh, uh, why he attacked Adam, why he deceived Adam. He, uh, he deceived the angel. He deceived most of the angel. Why does he fair become such a notorious uh, creature in, in this creature? Yeah. Why does he fair become a notorious creature in the, in the scripture? Because we envision him as an adversary. This is 
so he's always going to he's always been a problem because he's always hated men. He's always been there from the beginning as an agitator. So there's no there's no part of the relationship of men and Lucifer has been a shining a star, I mean a a, <laughs> a, 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 a good um, example. Right. So but also to be clear, there are many different it's it's may not just be one, it could be many, but the ideal is like super the uh a high angel that goes against God. It's a concept that goes beyond time as much as long as and kind of knows. It. So it's so many different in every culture we have a Lucifer, we have a a, dual, a duality of good. don't go there yet. Don't go there yet. Don't go there yet. You you going you you, you let me finish with Adam. And then when we arrive to Jesus, then you could come there with me. Right. You could, because what you are saying, you, you there are other ground to start to, to take before we come on earth. Wait now, I am not on earth. Remember, I'm not on earth. Uh, well, then could it be the reason why Lucifer is notorious is because he is the first person to, I guess, sin or first being to sin? Um, just being the fact, like you said, we were all created as one, we were all created as God's perfect, you know, beings. And I'm not just saying for us right now, but just speaking in reference to yeah, like yeah. how you're saying, keeping it, keeping it in heaven where heaven is, they were all created as one. He was the first to disrupt everything and where it came from is is the beginning of where like how ricardo was starting to talk about there is going to be a duality so that's what i think yes we, you 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 right you know you you right but it, it, the the remember i said not all yours and i said stand out why lucifer become stand out well, and everything he, he stand out what was going in my mind even prior to you saying this, I was thinking first about how God created him and what God called him. And one of the things we know is that he was the bearer of light. And that question kind of came to my mind because there's a difference to be a light and the one that is bearing the light. So, and I know we don't want to get into Christ yet because we know who the light was, but why was the angel called the, he was the specific angel to call the bearer of light. Who was he bearing and why was he able to put that light down? Uh, I think we, I think we um, touched on that while it's back when I brought in about the history of Lucifer and the name Lucifer coming from an ancient uh, folklore about the the Saturn. Mm -hmm. So the name Lucifer, not Saturn, sorry, um, Venus being the morning star. So the, the folklore comes from there. So, the, so when Isaiah calls him Lucifer the bringer of light, that's Isaiah who calls him that. It's a metaphor. He's an old, it's an old, it's like it's an old um, folklore, and they just attributed to him the spirit, being that the idea comes from this light that wants to be shining brighter than the sun, which is the which is the morning star. So that's the where it comes from. So the bear, so the name Lucifer was brought in based on that concept. Mm. It's not to say that God calls Lucifer the the the, the morning star. We call it. We gave, we gave him that. In other words, we put it, we put that the uh, title. Yeah, we yeah. given them the name Lucifer is a title that we create, and it's just based on a, it's based on a personality of who that angel is, the angel that wants to be greater than God. So we attributed to that ideal of the morning star, which in Thousands of years ago, they looked at the morning star that wanted to be brighter than the sun because the sun was God. 
in that in in ancient Mesopotamia. That's how they viewed the the the, the stars. So that's just a if it passes down to religion, people don't have are lazy and don't want to change it. They just keep it going. Like we just yeah. keep going. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't it doesn't it's not uh it's not a knock on them. It's just it's just to keep it simple. So it's not like saying that's exactly what it is, but since it's already there, let's just keep let's keep it what what like for instance, we celebrate Christmas. Let's yeah. keep it simple. Yeah, right? continuity. Continuity. Yeah, it's we don't of, change. Yeah. We don't change. That's we true. don't change. Yeah. But, However, we, but we know who we're talking about, even though we, we the name is, is false. The, the name of Lucifer, even though the metaphor that they use cannot really give you a full understanding of what they are talking about, that doesn't mean there is not a truth in it. It's the personality, the ideal. That's right. There is a, because this is what I'm doing. This is what coming up to me now. I'm giving you, just as Gladia asked me on uh, dinner, I'm just giving reality of Jew, which is true. But the reason why that Jew and check is because that's what, this is the, how, how this is the degree which we could take, which we could see reality in the jury. But then, glad you are coming with the point. Why God would want a jury? When glad you are inject that point, what did I say? I dismiss the jury. But for me to dismiss jury, what do I have to do? I have to go to the creator. We don't need no jury. But when I reach the creator, what happened to us now? What happened to us? We find, we find ourselves to a degree that we cannot reach there unless God revealed to you things because we don't have no clue. This is the same thing Christ did to Nicodemus. This is the same thing he used to Nicodemus. And finally, he said to Nicodemus when he finished, if I take things on earth to show you things and you don't have no clue, what about if I take things in heaven? You won't have none at all. So what we have, what we're doing here, we are. Do you see our, our, our method of study here? We are dealing on earth, we are dealing in heaven. We are dealing with a power that is greater than us. That type of mentality. My brother, my brother, a person could reach, could have a PhD. It's hard for him to understand what we are talking with now. What we study here with now is hard. These things that are revealing they are not revealing by man. They are revealing by God to make us understand things, how things move and what things doing. But nevertheless, I leave that alone. Those metaphors, I don't go by those metaphors. I am not the, those which you already mentioned, which is very good to mention that that we take those names compared with Lucifer to give this different title. That's mantra, which is true, which is true. But you will see if you go, if you go in the book of Daniel, when you see the fight that Michael had, 
he used the word prince. What do we mean? And Christ used that same word too. Prince. What do we mean by prince? How do we understand prince in this world? Sub, a sub ruler, a son of the king. A, a son of the king. But what you what what do you what relate what what connected with prince? What the duty a prince have? Royalty, leader, rulership, general. Rulership. Well, you we know that Michael is the general of the of the art of. He's he basically replaces Lucifer as the leader of the art of the. Yeah, yeah, a leader, a leader. Actually, we could say a leader. Yeah, it's a simple way to say a prince is a leader. He's not just an angel; he is a high-ranking angel. A high-ranking angel. And this is why they use those word prince, refer to Lucifer. Jesus Christ do not use the word Lucifer per se. He used the word prince. Christ used the word prince referring to Lucifer. Actually, Christ don't use a metaphor per se. He gives them a correct title because- Of course, man, of course. If you have to go of back- course. If you go back to Daniel, not Daniel, if you go back to Isaiah, who is he speaking of when he called, he's speaking of Lucifer, he's actually speaking of the king of Babylon. That's right. And so who is the king? Who is supposedly also Lucifer? Or or or, or Lucifer has possessed the body of the king. So it's not far from what, and, and that reality, that's always the case is most likely that whoever is the king or the prince of this world is either appointed by Lucifer or is Lucifer himself. Well, but, but, but I don't go there yet because you are you are coming up to me. I don't, I'm, I'm in heaven yet. I am in heaven, I haven't come and done yet. I'm coming down. And that's why we are dealing. Why the creator give Lucifer a final sentence or give the prince of this world. Leave Lucifer, take out Lucifer out. Give the prince of this world a final sentence because he ruled in heaven. I think you have something to say, ma'am. I, 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 I close up, say something. Um, the question that was coming into my heart was, you know, why did, why did God even allow <laughs> the devil to get into the garden of Eden in the first place? Because- Nice, this is nice. This, um, this is beautiful. When you, when you hear something, he was cast out from heaven onto earth and then there was the beginning quote unquote of everything or our world or our understanding of what was created and yet the enemy or the serpent itself had access to something that was as holy as it was for me was almost like if God didn't want him to enter nor taint that or corrupt that there was no quote unquote barricade to keep him there was no boundary there was no you could do this but don't do this it could have been a, implied in my head but at the same time I wonder if it was a trap in the same context for the enemy himself you know what I mean so I wonder. I see up with. I see up with. I, 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 I was about to say. I. I. I, 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 I see a point. Oh Lord, this is beauty. I see up with. I, I keep talking, 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 talking. I wonder if God played chess better. You know, like He knew the next move and the move after that and the move after that and we. And I know we're not getting to that point where we're talking about Jesus, but the final move 
is the move that he did before the foundation of the world that the enemy himself was not included into, but rather he was lured into it to get the final, <laughs> final uh, uh, um, uh, call on his life. A final, a final action. Action or the well, how, how God has his hands on him. He was like, all right, I know you, I know all your moves right now. He puts us here and he let the door stay open. And it still didn't work in his favor, even, even though he thought, he thought he had it, you know, it, and, and I wonder, because I feel like, I feel like God was, I don't know how to put this together the way I, I'm seeing it in my head, but in a sense of how he came into the, the garden of Eden and he said in there that he will crush her head. And I feel like the way he entered was into her head, right? She, she, hmm? No, she will crush his head. No, that's not what it's, that's not what I read. Let me, let me the read seed it. of the woman, the seed of the woman will crush the head of the serpent. Okay. No, let me, let me read it again. Cause maybe I misread it. Genesis, hold on. Chapter three. Let's, let's read it again because I'm like I'm confused. Oh, no, I, I believe I believe you 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 are in, in the right place apart here. It says um three. So um maybe I should read it in a different fifteen. Read fifteen. Three fifteen. Genesis fifteen. Which Genesis three verse fifteen. I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. In other words, the seed of the woman. He, he don't put gender in it. There is no gender. Well, there There's is no gender, but um. But he, he could, so, you could okay. and you could put gender now when NLT, Jesus came, which I didn't want to go yet. Right. So the NLT version says, I will cause hostility between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. That's right. He will strike your head and you will strike his heel. Yeah. Yes, that's another translation for that, which I, I, I understood it so, that way you know, so in what, a sense where he will, he will kick you in the head and you will only hurt his feet. You get it? Yeah. So uh, so it's like if I kick your head, it's only going to hurt my feet, but you're going to get a knock on the head. Yeah, but it, 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 the, the word you, the way the um, bruise. I was looking for more information about bruise or uh, because bruise is not really is a bruise. The, the book of Revelation give you a sense of a mark on the head of Lucifer. It is a, a scar, a scar in the head of Lucifer in the book of Revelation. But that is more um, artificial. When we go to Jesus, we will see the thing better. When I come to Jesus about Christ, when we attack, when we go to the point which we related Christ, that's the time those, those points are going to be wide open. For now, we see a cloud. But when you attack Jesus, when we go study about Jesus' life, about Jesus' purpose, about why he's, and this is why you come up with a point which is very, 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 very good. That point, he could be a trap unknowingly. Yeah, it's a, it's a metaphor, but it's also based on it's a old saying that, that predates ours. It's, a, it's meant to say that if you were to step on a snake, right? Who would hurt more? 
if if the if my foot hurt, but I crush your head, who hurts more, right? The head, the, the head is more. It's a, minor, it's a minor inconvenience for me with a bruise, but the snake will die. <laughs> yeah, the snake will die on which is this is why I said when we go to to the New Testament. In the revelations, it's it's uh, we it's a re, it's retold in that when the dragon versus the the seed of the woman. That's I mean, right. Yeah, what you guys meaning, but the, the way I'm receiving it is not in the same way. Well, it's not it's not I, her head. It's the serpent's head. Not, I understand. I understand that's how I'm I'm I understand how y'all seeing. I'm just saying that's not how how I'm reading it for some reason. I'm not go seeing on, it that. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go on. Tell and me the way you would read it. And I'm I'm seeing him trying to bruise her head and no, not her head, his head. He's the his head is the one that's getting bruised. Get it? When it's, you have to read it how I mean it may it's maybe read. read is is the second head going to be bruised? Head is getting hurt. The, the second head is going to be bruised. But the heel of Christ will be will be will be will be one. So when I read the NLT version and it says he will strike your head. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So he's speaking. No, who is he? He that Christ. That, now you don't want me to go that, that, that Christ. That and Christ. Whose head is he striking? Okay, so he will, uh, um, the second. The, he, the, the, he was the woman who will bruise your head, the serpent. He, the, the seed of the woman, will bruise your head. Okay, sure. so the reason why I was just seeing it differently, I'm not saying that it's wrong. That's not. I'm just no, 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 no. Forget about wrong. We are not in the wrong. Business. The way I'm under, understanding another context to it is because the enemy himself came in her mind, you know, through her head, through an through a way of messing her up first in her head. That's how I was. Oh, he got out. A sense because when he when he got into her head, that's when sin fell. That's when he he got in, and he was able to conceive darkness into her, or or questioning God in itself. It may not be in this context, but that's how I that's how basically it happened, where the enemy had an opportunity to come to her and deceive her through her mind, not through her forcing her to do anything, but convincing her enough to do something that was already told her, that was already taught to her not to do. Actually, devil do not, Lucifer or the prince, do not um, inject evil on Eve. No. Um, neither Adam. No, he made them question. <laughs> you see, what inject? What is the source of evil? What is the source of evil? Disobedience to God. No, what is the source? The root. The source. The, uh, the, the source, I'm talking the beginning of evil. What is the source of it? What, what is the source? Uh, desire. No. No. What is the source? Is it selfishness? No. I'm talking about the source, the, the, the beginning of it. Beginning of? Of evil. Evil? Yeah, the beginning of evil. I... No. The opposition. No. Devil Lucifer did not put any evil in Eve. Neither good. He didn't put it in, the, in them. What is the source of them? What is the source of evil? Confusion. No. Vanity. No. What you are telling me, you are telling me the result of evil. You are giving me the result. But that's not 
that's not evil. Go ahead, Tina. No, I was just thinking to see, uh, honestly speaking, and I, I understood what you were saying when you said that, uh, essentially, he took a truth and twisted it enough for her to enough for her to be convinced to go ahead with that act. You know what I'm saying? It's not um, necessarily <clears throat> that he injected sin as we're saying it now. It's more of he actually took the truth and twisted it enough for you to sit there and like you said, enters in confusion. That is the deceit of it all. And then you sit there and you wonder who, which way do I go? Which way was best? And it's... Go ahead, go ahead. I just want to sit there and say, I, I, I hate that you had to take the fall for it, but it's basically just sitting there saying, I, if you could put anybody in, in her position at that time where you will be given a choice, A or B. Yeah, devil, what devil did, devil give her a choice. That's what deceived me. Deceive is to give you a choice. But what is before you is so enticing, you will take it. So what's the beginning of evil? Desire? No. What is it? <clears throat> the fruit. The tree. Good and evil. Who put it there? God. The tree, the but understanding, the knowledge. So, but she didn't have the, the so root before. You're before. saying the knowledge, knowledge is the is the root of evil. No, no, I, no, I don't put it. Like, I don't put it like this. I don't put it like that. Lucifer, wait, wait a second. Is is <laughs> that's not the way it is? Is knowledge of good and evil. You have knowledge of good and knowledge of evil. Is a mix. Well, I think what it means is that to have knowledge is to have knowledge of good and no, evil. No, 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 no. Because um, okay, okay. Wait a second. You're going to cause me to come back to it. Um, do you suppose I take a gun? I take a gun and I shot somebody right before you. What do I do? Kill somebody. Kill somebody, but what do I do? I shot somebody, I kill somebody. What do I do? What, what happened to me? What, what happened? What I did? You committed a sin. Say that again? You committed a sin. I commit, I did an evil thing. Mm -hmm. I did an evil thing by shutting that man, take his life alone. Do I, do, do I am, do, am I, is it good for me to do that? No. Is, is it right? No, it's evil. How do you know it's not right? Because you have, because. You How do you know it's not right? You destroy the life. If somebody very hungry, extremely hungry, and I come, I give that person some food to eat to bring a married. What do I do? What I did? You did a morally good thing? Not morally, I do a good thing. You see, we use the word morale to cover. We use the word other things. But this is what I mean by good and evil. So that's the, see, here's where you're going to find yourself creating conflict because isn't God that also knows good and evil? Of course, man. So then, if you, you what, what, what happened to you? Listen, God make it for so, His own use. Well, I God, think 
Uh, in fact, in the book of Isaiah, it is said that God said that it is said that I create evil and I create it by myself. That's for his own good. Why this question you ask me, why God created? Why God created? Why God put it there? That is the reason why he told Adam and Eve, don't eat it. Because, because if you eat it, you shall surely die. Why we, Adam and Eve will die? You're going to find yourself in the box of Paul. No, no. Oh, yes, yes. Of course, this is, of course this, is what Paul, this is what Paul is driving at indeed. Right. But at the end of the day, it's not going to be about why this, why that. It's That's gonna, why. That, 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 now, you, now you're talking. Because you we why, have no... Why we, you? Why did you? No. Because the point is, the point is, you remember long ago, I told you that. I told you that. And I told everybody that. Let me give you this, then you tell me. Te let me give you that. You tell me. You tell me if I am right, if I am wrong. Um, Is there summer? Is there winter? Yes. Why? Because there's warm and there's and there's cold. The sun does does summer is dangerous? Can be. Does winter is dangerous? Can be. Could summer kill? Yes. It could winter kill. Yeah. Do you understand me? Do you understand my creator? Who creates summer? Well, you know, that's funny because you were in my head prior. And when I was saying, when you said the same analogy about the gun, and though we can associate the use of that situation as bad but we can also look at it in a good situation of course my sister life and it's same thing with fire why did god put fire if it burns people if it can hurt but did you also know it purifies <laughs> it could also bring warmth you know like so we we we're more we're more prone because of our state we're more prone to seeing the imbalanced way of it or the, and it's not necessarily even evil. It's even, and I was telling my kids that the other day, and I was like, if I'm walking down the block and I make a right turn, did I do something evil? And they're like, no, you just made a right turn. And I said, but if I'm walking down the block and God told me, Gladia, I want you to make a left, do not turn right. Is that evil? <laughs> That's a good analogy. <laughs> and they said, yes. And I said, why? They said, because you disobeyed what God said. So the concept of evil and good is really the concept of understanding, am I obeying or disobeying? Because so, it really doesn't have a degree. No. Really. So I, wanted, I wanted to go to that point, back to what you were saying. So is, when you said is, um, to connect with what she was saying, when you said is summer or winter dangerous, that's true. But summer, if you die from heat exhaust, it's not evil. If you die from, if you die from, um, 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 my, my brother, that is the analogy I'm giving. No, no, I'm just saying, where does it become evil is if you lock somebody in a car in the summertime intentionally, now you committed an evil. The point That's I'm right. making is evil is a choice. That's right. That's where you get that, go, 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 go. Now, now you get into me. Now right. come, 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 come. Open yourself. Open yourself. So we go, we could go back to is it evil? Is there a great evil that we die? Yes. The evil came from the fact that we chose evil, thus we die. 
So why there is sickness is because of an evil or else no one would die, right? So evil started, then we die. Those are, those are they're not mutually exclusive. Death uh, is because of evil. Whether uh, we die by the hands of our own or by the hands of nature, you know, or sickness, the death part happens because of evil that we commit. You know what I mean? Now, I what want you us from that death is freedom of evil. And that only way for us to also be free of death is to be free of evil, which is Christ. So, um, I mean, I I'm want you to go before, before, before you go further, hold your thought, hold your thought, because now I see everybody is getting in what we want to go. Um, uh, 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 go in the book of Genesis. Not in the same passage. Let us go where he say man same con the, do we get continually. Look at that verse for me in the book of Genesis. There you go. Man do evil continually. You say the last forever, man. After man they start to be uh, multiply, multiply. Is it when God says, I will no longer strive with man? Yes, that's right. Genesis 6. I think so, you right. Yep. So. Yep, verse 30, verse, start to verse a, um, Verse 12, 6, 12. And God looked up on earth and behold. Oh, before that. I, I, I think before that. The earth also was corrupt before God and the earth was filled with violence. No, verse 5. Five. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of and of thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Okay. Okay. Another way. You, you remember you making that much choice? Pass. I, I have to say this extra because just this next verse is one of my favorite verses. Mm -hmm. And it repented the Lord that he had <laughs> man on earth. It's one of the weirdest verses ever. It is a weird. It is a weird verse. Because I, 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 you see, I, we, I'm dealing with Lucifer, but somehow, somewhere, you are keeping me to go to, to Adam and Eve because I haven't touched Adam and Eve yet. I haven't touched Adam and Eve yet. We are only dealing with with the with the, with the place of the uh, the place of the uh, of the world, which is which which we call Lucifer. We are dealing with him, but remember all those points coming out because. Evil is when you keep on doing things that destroy people completely. God has, okay, let me give you um, analogy. It's not analogy, it's a fact, it's a fact, it's a fact. Why? Um, why we have a scale? Skin? Scale. Scale? Yeah. To so measure weight. Why we have to measure weight? Balance. To get it. Why we have to measure fine balance? No, it depends. What are you seeking the way for? Whether, whether medically speaking or whether grain is speaking. I'm talking about grain. I'm talking about medical, same time. Okay. Whether medically speaking or whether grain is speaking. Medically speaking, that means we measure, we take scale of people um, to measure their weight. Because for a reason, because the doctor don't want you to be overweight. That medically speaking, agriculturally speaking, why we measure wheat? Why we measure grain? So proper measurement. So again, to keep a 
proper ingredients, proper balance, or today, what what do we do to contract in order to get the proper weight? Trial and error. Uh, yes, it's true. But what do we do? It's true. But what do we do to to contract? Get tested. We test it with what? Trial and error. <laughs> well, I, I think I have to put it myself. I am taking the natural way before, long time ago, we used to measure a grain, such as co coffee, such as other grain. We take a piece of iron. We put it in the part of the scale and we put the real grain, the real grain on our one scale. So we have two scale, two, two balance. One is a piece of iron, which the scale today, it could be like that too. The piece of iron and the grain. When is balance, do you really know? Yeah. So you know what what the grain represents in the form of iron of how many bars. So you say you have this amount of pounds of iron versus worth of grain. That's right. So therefore, then you don't you don't you see everything. Yes, it's for for weight. I mean for for pricing. For pricing, everything is equal. Heavenly Father have everything balanced. That's why he put laws in everything he does or he did. He put laws. Understand my father. <laughs> he put laws. Once you violated the law, what happened? Like, he lost balance. As I said, the wages of sin is death, right? It's a wage. It's a scale. He lost balance. So that going back to the at that word, it's a scale, it's a wage. Oh, is a scale. Good and evil is a scale. But, but go ahead. Uh, that was the point I had earlier. I thought I lost it, but no, I think God wants me to say it. Um, or I don't know. I just want to share it. But what what came to uh, mind was the time when um, Peter wanted to eat. Um, the uh, the animal when he had the dream, and God put before him the birds and all that, and Peter was very adamant about not eating because he understand the law from the beginning that God Himself had oh. put into place, and now after Christ has died. And now we have God telling him, eat, and God telling him, it's okay for you to eat. This is me paraphrasing. And he said, because I don't make what I make clean, unclean. That's right. You, so in other words, in other words, God already put his formula or his words on whatever he decides. Oh, thank you, Jesus to change because we one way we could see something evil and in another situation god is presenting that same case in a in a um in a good way in in a in a in a way that you see it as light so you can't really judge god according to even his own measurement because we don't understand the measurement of god because of our limitation that's because right because of where our mind is, he is, he can sit here and we say, and this is why we didn't see Christ from the beginning, because we have so many quote unquote measurements of what God or Jesus is supposed to look, supposed like. To look like. And Jesus was before us and we dismissed him. Better yet, we killed him. So 
it's not it's not even a measurement that we can even ever understand though there is a measurement that god himself will always abide to and it will always make sense to him because again his thoughts is above our thoughts his ways is still above our ways so no matter how we think we're perceiving it even in a situation of walking through fire doesn't actually make sense in my mind but just look, just look like those three youths that walked through the, went into the fire, just trusting that God himself will be there. They don't know the solution. They don't know what God can do, but in any circumstance, he can come forth and he can change the situation. But I feel like when it comes to law, when it comes to his way of doing things, there is no, there is no um, gravity. There is no there is no understanding you could search and search and try to understand why the only thing he allows you to know is everything i do is for the good it's yes. for yes. the better yes. Yes. and yes. whether you agree with it or not i am god that's your problem and it's oh that's your problem that's your business you, you see um, the law we have here is not okay. Thank you. It's not the same law the angel have. Amen. <laughs> there are many different laws. He put in. My brethren, next week, I leave for you to be thinking, but I want you to ask more questions and so we could deep get deeper into God's mind. <laughs> and he will reveal to us things that I tell you, <laughs> the world will be afraid to understand. So I leave you there. I meet you next Sunday. Amen. Tina, you want to pray for us? Oh, God, did she give me pray? <laughs> no, I leave that to the professionals. Thank you very much. There is no such thing. We close in prayers. That's all. But she's not going to do it. Okay. You're going to pray, Dina? Okay. Go ahead, sis. No, I was actually going to say no again, but thank you very much for the offer. Okay. Um, uh, we can't do pick it up. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. We thank you for your peace. Amen. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your truth. Amen. We thank you for revealing in us, Lord God, that your ways are not our ways. That's right. Not our thoughts, Lord God, but that you have always been in it from the beginning. And you see through all that we cannot. Hmm. You see through even the darkest parts of us, that we do things that is not our will. But Lord God, despite of those things, you see past it. I thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. I thank you for this work that you are doing. And I look forward, Lord God, to your revelation, which is that you are, that we are to be like you. Yes, sir. Thank you for the privilege of being like you, Father. Amen. Amen. We ask, Lord God, that you will continue to strive with us, that you will not let us go, that you remind us, Lord God, that we are not alone. Yes, Pray for many souls who might be able to reach this, this service, Lord God that may be going through things, that may be going through struggle, and may be going through stuff that they cannot understand. But you already know it, Lord God. Yes, so sir. thank you for it, Lord Father God. We thank you for fixing in advance. And we ask, Lord God, that you will allow these souls to have peace, knowing, Lord God, that you are already on it, that you're on your way, and that peace is on its way. Lord God, I thank you once again for all that you do for our families our friends and our loved ones. And we ask that you will watch over us as we close, Lord God, until we meet again, Father, Savior God. She will touch each and every one of these individuals, Lord God. You will keep each and every one of us under your bosom and in your spirit, Lord God. We thank you. We honor you. We magnify your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. Amen. I want to thank each and every person for coming out today. Um, I just know that this is a Bible study session. We'll be back again next week at the same time, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're looking forward to not only seeing you, but hearing what God put in you. So until then, you guys, you be safe, and we'll see each other, each other again next week. Have a blessed one. Bye-bye. Bye. See you guys.